Beginnings are such delicate times. Frank Herbert, June. Hello guys, welcome to the new section, Creating Your First Manifests. In this section we'll learn how to write your first manifest with Puppet, and how to put Puppet to work configuring a server. We'll see how to use Puppet to manage the contents of files, how to install packages, and how to control services. Now we start with the first video of this section, Hello Puppet, your first Puppet manifest. We know we can easily print Hello World in Puppet. In this video, let's do something a little more ambitious and have Puppet create a file on the server containing Hello World. We start by running this command on our Vagrant box. Now apply it with this command. In case you see an error message, that is Puppet command not found, check if you added Puppet to your path correctly. We can ignore the output from Puppet for the moment. But if all has gone well, we should be able to run this command. Cool. Let's look at the example code to see what's going on. The code term file begins a resource declaration for a file resource. A resource is some bit of configuration that you want Puppet to manage, for example, a file, user, account, or package. A resource declaration looks like this. Resource declarations will make up almost all of our Puppet manifests, so it's important to understand exactly how they work. Resource type indicates the type of resource you're declaring. In this case, it's a file. And title is the name that Puppet uses to identify the resource internally. Every resource must have a unique title. With file resources, it's usual for this to be the full path to the file. The remainder of this code is a list of attributes that describes how the resource should be configured. The attributes available depend on the type of the resource. For a file, you can set attributes such as content, owner, group, and mode. But one attribute that every resource supports is ensure. Again, the possible values for ensure are specific to the type of resource. In this case, we use the file to indicate that we want a regular file, as opposed to a directory or symlink. Next, to put some text in the file, we specify the content attribute. The content attribute sets the contents of a file to a string value you provide. Here, the contents of the file are declared to be hello, comma, world, followed by a new line character. In puppet strings, we write the new line character as backslash n. Note that the content specifies the entire content of the file. The string you provide will replace anything already in the file, rather than be appended to it. Let's see modifying existing files. What happens if the file already exists when Puppet runs and contains something else? Will Puppet change it? The answer is yes. If any attribute of the file, including its contents, doesn't match the manifest, Puppet will change it so that it does. This can lead to some surprising results if you manually edit a file managed by Puppet. If you make changes to a file without also changing the Puppet manifest to match, Puppet will overwrite the file the next time it runs, and your changes will be lost. So it's a good idea to add a comment to files that Puppet is managing. Something like this. Add this to Puppet's copy of the file when you first deploy it, and it will remind you and others not to make manual changes. Moving on to dry running Puppet. Because you can't necessarily tell in advance what applying a Puppet manifest will change on the system, it's a good idea to try to do a dry run first. Adding the double hyphen no op flag to Puppet apply will show us what Puppet would have done without actually changing anything. Puppet decides whether or not a file resource needs updating, based on its MD5 hash sum. In the previous example, Puppet reports that the current value of the hash sum for temp hello.txt is 7678, whereas according to the manifest, it should be this. Accordingly, the file will be changed on the next Puppet run. If you want to see what change Puppet would actually make to the file, you can use the show diff option. These options are very useful when you want to make sure that your Puppet manifest will affect only the things you're expecting it to, or sometimes when you want to check if something has been changed outside Puppet without actually undoing the change. Let's see how Puppet applies the manifest. Here's how our manifest is processed. First, Puppet reads the manifest and the list of resources it contains, and compiles these into a catalogue, an internal representation of the desired state of the node. 
Puppet then works through the catalog, applying each resource in turn. First, it checks if the resource exists on the server. If not, Puppet creates it. In this example, we've declared that the file temp hello.txt should exist. The first time you run sudo puppet apply, this won't be the case, so Puppet will create the file for you. Then, for each resource, it checks the value of each attribute in the catalog against what actually exists on the server. Here, there's just one attribute, content. We've specified that the content of the file should be hello, comma, world, backslash, n. If the file is empty or contains something else, Puppet will overwrite the file with what the catalog says it should contain. So, the file will be empty the first time you apply the catalog. Puppet will write the string hello, world, backslash, n into it. You can also create your own manifest file. You can name it anything you like, so long as the file extension is .pp. Use a file resource to create a file on the server with any contents you like. Apply the manifest with Puppet and check that the file is created and contains the text you specified. Edit the file directly and change the contents. Then reapply Puppet and check that it changes the file back to what the manifest says it should contain. So that's all about writing your first manifest.